Good morning, Miss Terry. Good morning. There's some mail for you. I hope this is what you've been expecting. Thank you. Yes, it is. should cover my bill. Thank you, Miss Terry. If you'll endorse it, please. Oh, Edwards. Yes? Adjust Miss Terry's account. No, I, I think you'd better close it. Why, is there anything wrong? I, I hope the service has... It's just become a little rich for my bank account. Oh, I, I understand. Uh, close Miss Terry's account. Right away. It was my manager's idea that I register here and put up a good front for the press. I believed everything he told me. Oh, I see. Oh, Miss Terry, Mr. Blake calling you from Kansas City. You can take it in booth number one. Thank you. Hello? Hello? Oh, hello, James. Don't tell me that's really you, Joan Terry. I suppose you've been too busy getting your name in electric lights on Broadway to write me a letter now and then. Or is that too much to expect from one's fiance? Please, James, don't be cross. I have been busy. You've no idea how hard I've been trying to... I think I've been very patient with you, my dear. I permitted you to go to New York to seek a career just to humor you. But, James, you're not being fair. Surely you should know by this time that you've been chasing rainbows. But I... And besides, your real career is back here in Kansas City being Mrs. James Blake. Shall I wire the money for your transportation home, dear? No. I don't need any money, and I'm not chasing rainbows. Whether you have any faith in me or not, I'm going to make good on Broadway. And when and if I'm ready to come home, I'll buy my own transportation. Here you are, Miss Terry. Thank you. I'll have my luggage picked up this afternoon. Uh, perhaps you would consider one of our less expensive rooms. We, we have a few at... Six dollars a week? I, I wish I could. Well, thanks anyway. Oh, uh, Miss Terry, if I might make a suggestion, there's a sort of a girl's hotel, Barton Hall, where you might rather be able to manage within your budget. Of course, it, it isn't as ornate, and you won't have the service. Which you will find here at Barton Hall. Of course, there's a connecting bathroom. Let me show it to you. It's very reasonable, you know. All right. Theodore? Yes, Ma. I just rented room number seven. That's uh, Mrs. Billings, my wife. Now, as I was saying... And I won't let you look for my things in your bedroom any longer. What nerve, my perfume, my hand lotion. At least I didn't use your hair, Di. Did I, Tootsie? Well, here we are. Oh, I'm sorry. I hope we aren't intruding. Not at all. I'm moving out of this mousetrap anyway. She's always joking. Actually, she's moving into room number one. That's uh, Thelma Mason. She opens at the Gaieties next Tuesday. Uh, shall I tell Mrs. Billings to make out a receipt? Well, I don't know. You see, it isn't exactly what I was looking for. I wanted something more... I don't think you could find anything more suitable than so near Broadway. As a matter of fact, right through this window you could see Broadway if it weren't for that building. <laughs> well, since you've already told Mrs. Billings you've rented room seven, I guess I'll... I assure you, you've made a splendid decision. Uh, the rent will be $16.50. $16.50? Payable in advance. I'll have your receipt and uh, change downstairs at the desk. Thank you, Miss Terry. Thank you. Oh, what happened to bed is bad luck in show business. Oh, are you an actress? Yes. This work is only temporary. Just sort of a fill-in between engagements. I understand. Well, if there's anything you need, just call me. I'm Sue Collins. Thank you, Sue.
thought you were my ex-neighbor. The fine reception you planned for the new star of the Gaieties. Star? That burlesque queen from Brooklyn? Huh. She's the great American tragedy of the stage. Oh, uh, I'm uh, Glenda Benton, Nellie on the evening news. Nellie, you know, advice to the love lawn? That's me, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, what do they call you? Joan Terry. Looks as if we share the same bath. <laughs> yeah, I have the adjoining cell. And don't be surprised at anything you have to share in good old Barton Hall. <laughs> Where are you from? Kansas City. Oh, the old magic carpet of dreams, huh? Yes. I can see the bright lights of Broadway all the way from home. <laughs> it's only a mirage, kid. There's a broken heart for every light on Broadway, and don't you forget it. Not for me. I'm going to make Broadway sing my song someday. Yeah, I know. You have to find out for yourself. <laughs> well, Joan, I'm in your corner. Anything I can do, just holler. Thanks. Mmm. What's the name of that perfume? Allure of my heart. Would you like some? Thanks. I've been using impatience. Maybe this will wake the guy up. <laughs> This is the worst piece of tripe I ever read. What are you going to do with it? It's for Sue. The sweet thing has been pestering me to get her part. And I told her I would. And this is it. Oh, oh that's rich. And will she flop? Shh. Little Sarah Bernhardt may hear you. Here's your part, darling. You see, I didn't forget. Oh, you really meant it. Yes, dear. It's the part of Prunella. It's very important. You must study the lines very carefully so you'll know them with your audition. Oh, I shall. Would you like me to read for you now? Now, now, dear. We're rather late for an appointment. I... I don't know how to thank you, Thelma. You're so kind to me. Not at all, my dear. Come, Betty. What a gag. Thelma, you're terrific. Orchids for Madame. You must have the wrong room. This is room seven, isn't it? That's right. Then you must be it, sweet thing. Hello? Hello, honey. I'm in the lobby. Oh, are you? Well, Sweet Thing doesn't live here anymore. And if you will, I'll come right down with your orchids, Mr. Funny Papers. Sweet Thing? Funny Papers? Orchids? Hey, Pop. Who's in number seven? Oh, I forgot, Mr. Dexter. Thelma Mason moved into number one this afternoon. Anyway, she's gone out for the evening. Oh, I see. Oh, and the flowers. I sent them to number seven, too. I guess that makes me a... A chump. With a capital C-H. She's out with a lighting expert. Caught some angel who spelled Thelma Mason. And he's going to try it out on the marquee in electric light. So she thinks. Steve, for a guy that's kicked around Broadway like you have, you're still not wise to the well-known brush-off. Brush-off? Don't be silly. Just a little friendly gesture, the old helping hand. So she bit it. You'll probably get hydrophobia. <laughs> So what? She's out with... Mr. Funny Papers? Right. The Sunday edition in Technicolor. Well, these were delivered to me by mistake. Sweet thing. There's been no mistake. They're properly addressed. But I... I don't know you. Oh, that's a mere technicality. Take care of it, will you, Glenda? Oh, Joan, this is Steve Dexter. Wall Street's gift to Broadway. Miss Joan Terry from Kansas City. Oh, yes, I've seen your picture in the paper many times. Uh, with a couple of cuties draped around his neck. Hey, Glenda, Miss Terry's liable to think I'm nothing but a playboy. Well, are you? Oh, only after fashion. Yeah, and how the fashion changes. One week blondes, the next week redheads. Just a fad. Exactly. One will get you ten, you have a cute gown to match these orchids. Oh, Glenda, you'd better wear these. You're dressed for a date tonight. No, thanks. I'm allergic to highbrow weeds. Oh, Miss Benton, I forgot to tell you. Mr. Thornton called and said... I know, I know. Said he couldn't make it. Detained on business. Thanks, Pop. 
Can you imagine? To me, this happens. Three times in the same guy. I must be slipping. Why don't you sit down and write yourself a letter? Sign it brokenhearted. Because there's no more ink in my fountain pen. Anyway, I'm still going out. Tears belong in beer. Fine, let's all go. Oh, no. Three's a crowd. See you kids at the junior prom. <laughs> Nellie rides alone. But twosomes are still the rage. Those orchids would look great on an evening gown. What do you say, Miss Terry? Broadway's just around the corner. And besides, this is my last night in town. Oh, are you leaving New York? Yes, on business to the coast. Incidentally, I'm stopping off in Kansas City, taking the super chief from there. But tonight, we still have Broadway. It'll be here when you get back. Ah, yes, but will you? Oh, I think so. Why? Well, I thought that if we made some of the high spots together, we'd have something interesting to talk about when I return. Isn't that right? I really wouldn't know. Like to find out? Well, that all depends. On what? Whether I have a gown to match these orchids. Are you as well as usual, Monsieur Dexter? Just fine, Pierre, just fine. Uh, two cocktails on the Dexter? <laughs> the price of fame when Pierre starts naming cocktails after you. Two cocktails à la Jean Terry. Hey, garçon. Uh, two cocktails à la Jean Terry. La même chose. Hungry? Mm -hmm. Should we leave it to Pierre? All right. Ah, merci, mademoiselle. Merci, monsieur. Very nice. Cocktails, dinner for two, orchids. Mr. Funny Papers has quite a flair for nice things. Funny Papers? Oh, of course. You think I'm Funny Papers. Well, aren't you? No, no, no. Funny Papers is the nickname of a producer. Oh, then you didn't send these orchids. No, but I'm very grateful to Mr. Funny Papers. If he hadn't, I shouldn't have met the girl from Kansas City. So, here's to him. And to his orchids. Coffee, Joan. Thank you, Sue. I believe I will. I'm a little tired. By what? The lights of Broadway? Maybe she just got off the merry-go-round. If you two fugitives from a striptease act, don't shut up. I'll take it easy, Glenda. They're only ribbing. Well, let's have it. Have what? Well, it's an old tradition. Everybody here has a story, or else they wouldn't be in Barton Hall. The girls believe in telling it once and getting it over with. But I... I there isn't any story. I was in the little theater group in Kansas City. And I was told I had talent and ability and advised to try the big city. Where my art would be appreciated. And where I would have a better chance. Of success. So I came to Broadway. Looking for a career. And here we are. A great big happy family. But just a little too noisy. Now, girls. Theodore. Yes, Ma. Good morning, Glenda. My, what big eyes you've got, Grandma. <laughs> Look, honey, Jenny told me last night that her boss, Alexander Draper, is putting on a musical. So I told Jenny to drop in. You're uh, ready to look for a job, aren't you? I certainly am. Oh, uh, where'd you go last night? We went everywhere. <laughs> Steve Dex is a marvelous guy. That's James Blake. Boy back home? Mm-hmm. James wants to marry me. He's very nice, but... Well, what does he do for a living? He's in the coal business. Oh! A bookkeeper, huh? Oh, no, he manages several coal mines for his family. Oh, a capitalist. And you blinded by footlights. 
I have to get up at 7.30. But if I had a coal mine and wanted to marry me... What's this, homemade record? Mm-hmm. The only reminder of a very expensive manager. I made it at his request. Oh, do you mind? No. girl down at Draper's office. That I will do. However, don't order that mink coat just yet. I've been working for that guy for six months, and all he's ever said to me is, good morning and good night. <laughs> good luck, Joan. Quite swank. <laughs> when you get no fun hats around here, you get it with all the trimming. <laughs> Grab a chair and try to look temperamental. I'll do my best. No one on Broadway comes easier than breathing. And Alexander Draper is the all-time champ. Well, he's so cold-hearted, we even get along with that air conditioning around here. Well, I'm sure he and Broadway aren't as bad as you're painting them. Listen, hon, don't build yourself up for a letdown. Well, the Spanish Inquisition was patty cake, patty cake, compared to the going over you're going to get here on Broadway. Good morning, Mr. Draper. Morning. Miss Woods. Uh, yes, sir. Hold everything. Keep your fingers crossed. Good morning, Mr. Brown. Good morning. Mr. Draper's waiting for you. That's Mr. Bronson, the casting director. They'll be tied up for hours. Suppose you try some of the other offices and drop back around five. All right, thanks. Seems to be quite a bit doing, but I'll be back at five for sure. Remember, don't talk to strangers. <laughs> Murdoch say after you told him that? I didn't wait long enough to hear. Say, what about Mr. Draper? Well, the conference broke up at 4.30, but he hasn't come out yet. Oh, Mr. Draper, this is Miss Joan Terry. How do you do? Hello. She's been waiting quite some time to see you. What about? Well, I'm from the Kansas City Little Theater Group, and I'd like to... What do you do? Well, I have played leads, and uh, I sing a little, and... All right, let me hear you sing. What are you going to sing? Will someday be all right, Mr. Draper? Anything. Someday, when the clouds roll by, I'll see you smiling through, as you Before May days turn to 
gone. Well, if this isn't the end of a perfect day. Thanks for everything, Jeannie. Now, don't rub it in. Good night. Good night. Come in. Oh, hello, Sue. I thought I'd bring you some extra towels. Thanks, you can just put them here. What is that you have? Oh, it's a play Thelma gave me to study. Would you like to have me read? But there is a tomorrow, and the dawn will come. Pause. Bringing with it the blue-eyed goddess of fortune. Double pause. Oh, at last opportunity was here. There. That's the most beautiful part of all. Do you think I give it the proper interpretation? It was very expressive. Shall I read some more for you? If you don't mind, I'm a little tired. Oh. Well, I'll go then. But I want to thank you for all your kindness to me. That's all right, Sue. If I can ever help you, just call on me. Thanks, Joan. You don't know what that means to me. The theater is all I live for. surprise for you. What's the matter? Ah, uh, don't let it get you down. It's no use, Glenda. Voice lessons, rent, food, car fare. I'm all out of money. Well, maybe I could. No, thanks, Glenda. I've reached the end of the rainbow and the pot of gold isn't there. Mrs. James Blake, next stop. Oh. Well, that's the way it is, huh? I'm afraid so. I'm expecting him to call any minute. Hmm. Mrs. Coal Mine. Won't that be something? Maybe it isn't such a bad deal. After all, you don't find coal mines running around in the street. But what about... Oh, skip it. I was just thinking out loud. Up pops the devil. Hello? Yes? Oh, hello, James. Is that you, Joan? Yes, James, of course. Do you know why I'm calling? Yes, James. Is that your answer? Yes? Yes, James. Fine. Now, you're really acting sensibly. I'll call for you the first thing in the morning. Yes, James. And you won't be sorry. Good night, John, dear. Yes, James. Yes, James. Yes, James. If you put that dialogue in water, it would swim. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I should talk. Like all the rest in Barton Hall. <laughs> I'm no howling success. There's poor Sue who will never get a chance. And stupid Betty aping Thelma. And Polly who's just dying to own one of those dresses she models for those big fat dames that can't even squeeze into them. The whole thing's a nightmare. You're lucky. You woke up in time. Maybe I should be thankful there is a coal mine. And Glenda, James is really much nicer than he sounds or looks. What is that surprise you mentioned? Oh. Oh, nothing. Now, what is it? Steve Dexter's in town. Steve Dexter? Yeah, I'm like a dope. I asked him to the party tonight. Ah, oh, don't be so sad. Put on the glad rags. Tomorrow will be time enough for that home sweet home routine. But tonight, it's still New York and the goose hangs high. <laughs> I've been working on a new routine, kids. It's an impression of our greatest colored tap dancer. Hope you like it. I know it's 
been three months since I gave you the part to study. After all, my dear, you know how producers are. I can't force them to call you. Oh, I didn't mean it that way, Thelma. It's just that I know my part so well now. In fact, all the parts. <laughs> Stage fright? Look, Steve, why don't you go in and keep her company? Why me? Oh, you wouldn't understand, you big lug. Please, Glenda, I'd rather be alone. I'll tell her when I see her. Oh. Is that all you have to say to an old friend? I'm sorry, Steve. I am glad to see you. Funny, we do seem to meet just before we part, don't we? You mean you're leaving town? Yes, this is my last night. I'm going back home. But what about that burning ambition? Your career? Career? That's just an illusion. Wait days and days and then have some half-baked producer tell you to go to Hollywood. Get a name first. Pin your hope on some old fool who hasn't the heart to tell you he can't use you. But files your name in the wastebasket. Casanovas, whose only interest is loose telephone numbers. You walk miles and miles each day just to save car fare. Career. So far as I'm concerned, they can take Broadway and every line on it and dump it into the East River. I've heard that before. But Broadway gets into your blood. You'll be back. I'm afraid not. 
You see, I'm going to be married. Well, if that's the way you want it, you deserve the best. I hope the lucky man realizes it. He's really very nice, Steve. From my hometown. Well, haven't you anything to say? Don't you wish me luck? Certainly, Joan. Tons of luck. If you were my own kid sister, I wouldn't have an argument. You've made up your mind to marry the boy from back home. Well, I, I guess that's the way it should be. Happy ending. Thanks, Steve. It's a shame. Joan has worlds of talent. Why, she could be a star. Haven't I been telling you that for months? When she sang Blue in Love again? Rough love. Mm. And you're not kidding, Janie. Girls, girls, I wish you'd stop your chattering and help me put the room to rights. You know, Mom will be coming home pretty soon. Shush, Pop. Gather around, kiddies. Glenda has an idea. Why can't we raise enough money to keep her going till she gets a break? $25 a week would do it beautifully. Say, that is an idea. And split up among us, it wouldn't amount to very much. Oh, about a dollar and a half apiece. A dollar and a half isn't very much. Oh, but... she'd never take it. She'd think it was charity. But it needn't be charity. Why not do it in a legal and businesslike manner? You could even incorporate number seven. I mean, Joan. Incorporate? Say, maybe you got something there, Pop. Certainly. Then she wouldn't be accepting charity, and you'd have protection for your investment. Sounds all right. I'd butt my eye. But with radio and stage and personal appearances, why, she's liable to make $100,000 a year. And one-third of that ain't hay. Pop, get ready with some paper. Louise, you know enough about law to draw up a contract. <laughs> After six months with Callahan, 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 then Goldberg, I know all of their force from status quo to habeas corpus. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Whereas, we the undersigned, hereafter known as, uh, what do we name the corporation, girls? How about something with talent in it? Talent. That's it. Talent Incorporated. Perfect. Talent Incorporated, party of the first part, agrees to furnish Joan Terry, hereafter known as party of the second part, the sum of... $25 a week. The sum of $25 per week. And whereas... And whereas... Theodore Billings, party of the third part... Theodore Billings, party of the third part... agrees to furnish room number seven rent-free. Agrees to furnish room number seven, rent free. Rent free? No, no. Mom would skin me alive if I consented to this. The corporation was your idea and you're the chief sack holder. I won't do it. Okay. Girls, don't you think Mom's just dying to know that Pop's been betting the horses again? It's blackmail. I protest. <laughs> Overruled. Proceed with the contract. And, uh, whereas... And... whereas... I've been singing this for a special celebration. It's warm, but it's pink champagne. Lecker and Barton Hall? Shh! If Mom should ever hear this... She won't unless you talk in your sleep. Joan, uh, Miss Terry, I have the honor to present you with your first Broadway contract. 
The girls and I have formed a corporation. Talent Incorporated. Which gives us the sole and exclusive right to your services as an actress. In turn, you're to receive $25 per week and room number seven, rent free. I don't understand. It's very simple. We all think with a voice like yours, you have a future. And we're banking on it. Well, girls, I don't know what to say except, well, it's no use. I'm leaving tomorrow. Oh, you certainly give up easily. Some of us have been trying for years and never getting to first base. We figured it'd be a better deal to pool our ambitions and hopes and concentrate on someone who has the best chance of making the grade. And baby, you're it. Do you think I'd leave if I thought I had a chance? Joan, we all have a lot of faith in you. You ought to have some in yourself. But I... Oh, uh, yes, James, yes, James. Is that a future? It's all so fantastic. I don't want to disappoint anyone. Then it's a deal. Come on. Good. You won't regret it. I really shouldn't, uh, but this being a female corporation, it should be launched properly, like a battleship. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the talent incorporated and its greatest asset. The girl from room number seven. To all of you, from all of me. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Are you there? And are you due for a cave in, Mr. Coal Mine? Are you trying to tell me you've changed your mind? Definitely. And you expect to walk out of my life because of this silly business about being a corporation? Pop Billings has the contract if you'd like to see it. But, Joan, what about Mother? She's planning your reception, and my sister's choosing your trousseau. How romantic. Well, let me know when the price of coal goes down, Jimmy, old boy. I'd like to give someone a hot foot. And furthermore, I do not approve of the people with whom you associate. Joan, the train leaves at 2 o'clock, and you're going back to Kansas City with me. I mean what I say, and I'm not going back. May I ask who is Mr. Funny Papers and why he presumes to address you so familiarly? Sweet thing. Oh, that's Steve Dexter. He's a... Uh, no, no, I mean he's a producer. You're rather confused, aren't you? Please, James. Steve Dexter, the notorious playboy. And who is he, the president of the corporation? Don't be silly. It was all an accident. I received the orchids from him by mistake. Orchids? And I have closed the deal this afternoon. We are crediting your account with 30,000 shares of TB&T. That's all, Miss Cunningham. Oh, Miss Cunningham. Yes? Uh, send these to Miss Joan Terry, Barton Hall. You know the address. Get them there before one. She's checking out. Yes, sir. Oh, Miss Cunningham. Yes? On the card, uh, put uh, goodbye and good luck. And I do mean number seven. And I do mean number seven? Right. Oh, you're still waiting. I'm terribly sorry. I'll tell Mr. Dexter you're here. Never mind. I'll tell him myself. Mr. Dexter, take my advice and send these to someone else. And just who are you? I'm James Blake, Miss Terry's fiance. That is, I was until you started in your conniving. Conniving? Yes, conniving. Sit down, Mr. Blake. I won't sit down. I'm here to tell you. I said sit down. Now. What's this all about? You know what you've done. Why achieving it further by talking about it? Mr. Blake, I'm certainly glad you dropped in to see me. I've always wanted to meet someone like you. Just what do you mean? I don't know what you're talking about. You don't know about Joan going back on a promise to marry me because of the corporation those women concocted. You don't know about that. It's all news to me. Maybe you better keep on talking. Tell me more about this, this uh, corporation. Oh, it's a preposterous idea. Talent Incorporated, to promote Joan's career or something. And when I came in here, I was sure it was your scheme. Not guilty, but it is a pip of an idea. Mr. Dexter, no thanks. I could offer Joan security, family, position. Do you honestly believe that she should sacrifice all that? No, not necessarily. Do you know Joan well? Yes, very well. I've met her exactly twice. And that calls for orchids twice? Listen to me, Mr. Blake. The orchids were strictly an accident the first time. 
these on purpose. A little going away gift for a very sweet girl. I understand now. Perhaps I made a fool of myself barging in like this. Oh, I don't blame you. Joan's the kind of a girl that makes a man go around bumping into lampposts, believe me. I hardly know what to say. Except you're a pretty smart person, Mr. Dexter. Steve to you, Jim. Thanks, Steve. But there's, there's still that hair-brained corporation. Look, Jim, there's a high mortality rate on corporations, especially that sort. The old law of averages is on your side. Perhaps you're right. Some of the girls will get tired of putting money into it after a few weeks. I hope the whole thing flops. But I'm too busy to wait around for bankruptcy. I've got to return to Kansas City on business. Call mine, you know. I understand. But would it be asking too much of you, Steve, to sort of keep an eye on it for me? No, not at all. It'll be a pleasure. You can depend on it. Thanks very much. I appreciate everything, and excuse my rudeness. Forget it. Goodbye, Steve. So long. Miss Cunningham, will you get Miss Terry on the phone, please? Joan, this is Steve. Let me be the first to congratulate you. No, 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 on the corporation. So James did look you up. I hope he wasn't unpleasant. No, on the contrary, he's rather a substantial chap. Family position and all that. As a matter of fact, he more or less appointed me your guardian. How nice. Well, let me tell you something, Steve Dexter. I'm not your kid's sister, and I do not need a guardian. Oh, now, wait a minute, Joan. I only meant to... Do you ever say the right thing, Mr. Dexter? And with the build-up we're going to give her, we can't miss. We're going to cover with so much glamour, producers will be fighting for her autographs on contracts. You said it. I can hear Hollywood screaming for her right now. Well, here's the program. I'll handle the publicity. And you take care of the beauty work. I've already made an appointment for her. Louise, you think that photographer friendly yours will make the pictures we need? If he wants to get along with me, he will. Janie, you get some music arranged as soon as possible. Okay, if not sooner. Polly, you get the clothes. Hey, wait a minute. I can't take any of those gowns home with me. Oh, but that cute little friend of yours, what's his name? Uh, McDaniels is in charge of delivery. Isn't no, he? you can't mean it, Glenda. He's fat, 45 and bald. I'm willing to do anything, but that's asking too much. You have my sympathy, but we all have to make some sacrifice. Sacrifice nothing. I'd be a burnt offering. We're going dancing tonight, aren't we, Polly, dear? How can I say no? Hey, hey, don't sit down. You'll crease the dress. Joey? Polly, I really should have these dresses back at the store. I feel like an embezzler. Don't think about it, Joey. Just remember, we're going stepping tonight. All right, Ann, stop fussing. She's beautiful enough. <laughs> Ready, Harry? Let's get this last one quickly. I want to get this stuff all over tomorrow's papers. I'm all ready. Uh, will you girls clear the background, please? Now, Miss uh, Terry, would you over this way, a little, to your left a little bit. Yeah, that's good. Now, hold it. A smile. Okay, it's in the bag. The best-dressed woman on the American stage. What stage? She hasn't even had a lukewarm interview. The whole thing is silly. I vote we come to our senses and forget it. Girls, Joan has everything. There's no argument. But if the producers won't bite after the campaign we've staged... Okay, Benedict Arnold Billings. Oh, Glenda, it isn't that. But I can't juggle the books any longer. You know, Mom's beginning to smell a rat about that rent money I can't account for. And I'm a peace-loving man. Oh, you're all a bunch of weak-kneed backsliders. Just because the producers haven't been falling over each other to sign her up in the short time we've been plugging, you want to quit. What do you expect? Miracles? Girl, I have great news for you. Frances Weaver got temperamental today. Walked out on her part and trolled Draper what he could do with his show. And boy, is he in a jam. Maybe Joan should go see him. Maybe your eye. This is one interview little Joan's not gonna miss. Could be a... Come in. There's always room for one more. Are all of these girls waiting to see Mr. Draper? Yeah. 
Doesn't look like we're ever going to get a chance, does it? No, I guess not. Well, I'll try some of the other offices. They're coming thick and fast now, have I? I've been turning them away. <laughs> Who's first? Oh, she is, she is. Well, it's the first time in 25 years of show business. I ever heard one actress give another a break. Come in, young lady. Old Bronson. Never mind, that part's been filled. Why, that dirty double-crossing weasel. She must have been eavesdropping on us. She doesn't care how she gets a break. Here they come. All right, everybody act natural. Well, why so glum, children? Oh, yes, I remember. The bottom fell out of the market. <laughs> I bet I could buy the entire stock of the corporation for $1.98. Marked down from $2. Huh. Listen, you burly burlesque queen. If you want that lovely face of yours to look like hamburger, just keep blabbering. And that goes for you, too, you Paul parrot. Really? Yes, Selma, you're not acting quite fairly. After all, we are trying to accomplish something. Well, little Sarah Bernhard Jr., that's all the thanks I get for trying to get you a break. Give me that script. So did she give you that script? Yes, and she told me she'd get me an audition with Black and Horton as soon as I learned my lines. Thelma, I warned you. But I meant it. Can I help it if they went broke and didn't have enough money to put on the show? You knew that three months ago. And seeing Draper this morning was just a hunch, I suppose. Okay, girl. Wait a second. <laughs> Mom's favorite vase. Mm. Boy, if she ever finds out about this. I'd be willing to pay for this just to break it over Thelma's head again. Well, keep it quiet, girls. Papa will probably collapse when Thelma and Betty check out tomorrow. And you, falling for that phony. But it's a good script, Glenda. I can imagine. Really, it is, Glenda. Just read this. Well, that's the best sketch I ever read in any musical comedy. Well, when are we going to vote this corporation out of existence? Never. Gather round, kiddies. Glenda has another idea. And this is it. Strictly from hunger. And there's Joan Terry. Even if she could sing like two nightingales, she still couldn't drag enough money into the box office to feed a canary on the regular lunch. But feel it. Oh, amateurs and my theater, it would be a sacrament. You mean a sacrilege. Yeah, comes the dawn, and I wake up without a dime. I still think it's good. But there is tomorrow. Comes the dawn. And with it, the shining sun, bringing the blue-eyed goddess of fortune. Isn't that beautiful? Blue-eyed goddess of fortune. Even in Iowa, they don't have such corn. Sure, it's corny, but we're going to throw that part out in the rewrite, Felix. It'll be a surefire hit. But, Glenda, how can we put a show on without money? That's what I'm trying to get through your thick skull. You can put this one on for peanuts. You don't have to pay rent for your theater. The cast will work for nothing. The publicity is on me for free. And on top of that, you get Joan Terry, who'll be a star overnight, or I'll eat that script without cream. Oh, you mean everything on a coincidental basis? You mean cooperative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I still think we need an experienced leading lady. Have you figured out what a leading lady with a big name would cost? Have I figured out? Why do you think I'll buy aspirin by the carload? If we pay a leading lady, we ain't got money enough to put on the show. If we put on the show, we ain't got money enough to pay a leading lady. Oh, I tell you, it's a victorious circle. You mean a vicious circle. Yeah, and stop correcting me. Well, the trouble with you, Felix, is you want to eat your cake, but you're afraid of swallowing it. Now, in this case, the leading lady gets experience, we get a show, and it's all on the cuff. Not so quick. I'm the senior partner. I say yes and I say no, and that's positively final. Now, let me think. <laughs> Five weeks, and instead of coming home, Joan's more determined than ever to go through with this nonsense. Don't forget, Jim, this is still Broadway. More shows fold on this cow path than any street in the world. And with these two in back of this one, aren't they good producers? Very good, from the shoestring circuit. Come on, let's sneak over and catch a rehearsal, huh? <laughs>
may be wrong, but from where I sit, if the rest is like this, Horton and Black have a hit show in their hands. I'm going up and congratulate Glenda. Look up, Jim. Take it easy, Felix. They're just tired. They've been rehearsing all night and day. The show's all ready to open. It looks like a flop right now. You inducted me into this. I ought to have my head examined for a maroon. You mean moron. I inducted you. You're the senior partner. Anyway, I still think it's good. Don't think. It's your thinking is going to cost me the money I borrowed from my wife to put into this. For two cents, I'd sell this turkey. Mr. Horton, I'd like a word with you. Have it with him. He's the senior partner. With a lemon on my hands, I don't want to talk to anybody. But you don't understand. I'm interested in buying your show. Uh, uh, buying the show? Yes. Oh, well, don't mind him. Talk to me. I'm the senior partner. Now, if you will step into my office, we'll discuss the terms privately. Sir. Honey, the numbers are sparkling and the timing's like clockwork. And Joan Terry, a scintillating new star on the Broadway horizon. That's the way the reviews are going to read after the opening. Ah, oh, thanks, Steve. By the way, how's the coal mine taking it? Uh, not so good. What about Joan? Is she happy? Ah, oh, Steve, are you such a big ninny or is it an act? Don't you ever figure anything out for yourself? You know, here I've got a hit. Is this a hit, eh, Louis? Sure, that's what I've been saying all the time. Yes, of course, so it seems. Well, maybe at a price we could do business, Mr. Blake. Uh, James Blake. But there's one condition. Anything. You can have anything, Mr. Blake. You're a lucky man. When this show opens tomorrow night... That's the condition. The show must not open. You know, Joan, the moment I heard you singing that evening in Barton Hall, I felt that you were the only one that could really play this part. You're very sweet, Sue. And I know you'll do well, too. Oh, I know I shall. I've studied so hard. And wait, you see my lovely costume. It's simply beautiful. A new one? Have you made another change? Uh, well, yes, Glenda switched me into another part again. Just a moment, I'll show you my dress. Oh, excuse me, Glenda. <laughs> Little scatterbrain. Poor kid, she's all excited about her new costume. I certainly hope she clicks. She's not going on. Not going on? Look, Joan. I like Sue as much as you do, you know that. And it's nothing against her personally. But we've tried her out in every part in the show, and she can't make the grade. Sue will never be an actress. It's too bad, but that's it. We've all slaved to put this over. And it's better that she gets a little heartache now than to ruin everything for us later. The only time we ever have a hit, you have to sell it. Keep quiet. Well, boys, what do you think? Go ahead and tell her. You're the senior partner. Well, I think it sticks. The number's slow and the timing is off. And with Joan Terry in the lead, I couldn't fill the house even with dinners. I've absolutely decided this chromo will not open. It's closed as of right now. Are you two screwballs out of your minds? Why, well, you pack them in after the opening. But the mastermind, my senior partner, Shut he... up. Just a minute, Mr. Dexter. What I do in my theater is my own business. Well, you can burn down this flea house for all I care, but this show will go on if I have to buy it myself. Well, the show is not for sale. Okay, but you're not gonna sell these kids down the river. Change your clothes, girls. I'll get you another theater. Hey, just a minute, Steve. Uh, you can't do this to me. Can't do what to you? Well, I mean, don't you think you've caused enough trouble already? Joan. Joan. This is your last chance. Please come with me. I've been patient long enough. He's been patient. What a laugh. Me waiting 10 years for a hit, and my senior partner sells a show to that drip. You mean you sold the show to him? Not me, not me. Felix made the deal. Oh, so that's it, huh? Please, Steve, let me say something. Joan, I can explain everything. It's, well, it's because I love you. Zalv. Don't be so contemptible. The only person you could ever love is James Wellington Blake. Please, Joan. You're like a little boy who's never grown up. So smug and selfish and egotistical and cruel. So all right, you close the show. Now you can watch us all squirm because you know how much it all meant to us. Well, I certainly hope you're satisfied. And as for me, I'm so glad, glad and happy, understand, that I didn't trade my life for you and your family and your stuffy mansion. Which one of you is Miss Joan Terry? I am. 
Anything wrong, Pat? Oh, hello, Mr. Dexter. I've got some bad news. You know Miss Collins? Sue? What's happened? They're taking her to the emergency ward, Morningside Hospital. She was hurt in an accident outside of the theater here a little while ago. And when they put her in the ambulance, she was calling for you. Joan? Joan? Yes, sir? I was good last night, wasn't I? You were really great, Sue. She's delirious. I suggest you make a visit short. No, for the next 48 hours. Wasn't it thrilling? The applause and the flowers. I'm so sorry I won't be able to go on tonight. Without you, Sue, there wouldn't be any show. No. It must be a show. We've all worked so hard. Promise me that the show will go on. Promise me. I... I promise the show will go on. you decided to carry on. Anything else would have been stupid. Let's get the stupidity cleaned up once and for all. Yes. By the way, Steve, how long before you're going to realize that you're in love with Joan and she's in love with you? Romance, as they did in the 